Hello folks and welcome to this week's review. And if I sound a bit bunged up, I am. And also if I sound wheezy, well, I am. And if for whatever reason, the last 10 minutes of this video, you just see this because I've collapsed somewhere, then you'll know I'm suffering with a bit of a cold. And because I'm a man, then it's actually raging flu, which I'm sure you'll appreciate. Anyway, back to the review. So we are gathered here today to look at some isolation feet. They are from a UK company called Stack Audio, and the feet are called Orva EQs. Now, you might be familiar with Stack Audio because I have already reviewed some of the Orva speaker isolation feet. I'll put a little link up there. You can see the review. If you missed that, it'll give you a bit of background on the company and on those feet as well. And there's a connection with these EQ feet and those speaker feet, which we'll get to in a moment. So prices for these things. Well, at the time of recording this video, I have some prices for you. If you go on the website, uh, last time I went, it was slightly confusing. They hadn't sorted it out properly. This is all very new. It's a small company. I'm sure they have too much to do for the staff they don't have. And so I ask you to cut them a bit of slack. Just be patient with them. So they are correcting the price page. I just don't know if they've done it as you're watching this. So if they haven't, they will. So for now, what I'm gonna do is give you the actual prices. If they're different on the website, ignore the website. So these are the prices, okay? For three of these feet, you're looking at 150 pounds. Now, that's including VAT, of course, in the UK, but you won't be paying that if you're outside. It'll be lower because you, know, you don't pay the VAT. For a set of four, you're looking at 198 pounds. Now there's one wrinkle in all of these fees, and that's there are three variants, and the variants, well, they're called CSA1, CSA2, and CSA3. Basically, the higher the number, the more weight the foot can carry. So CSA1 feet, they can carry less than CSA2, which can carry less than CSA3. Same price, no difference in the price. The only price differences are when you buy more feet. The more feet you buy, the more you pay. As I'm doing this, I'll probably put a graphic on screen so you can see, you get a rough idea of the sort of weights each variant can carry. If you have any issues, if you have any problems, if you're not sure which variant to grab, give the company a ring. Ask them, say, I've got this amplifier or the streamer or whatever, and say it weighs this much. Which feet do I need to buy? If you're not certain when you read the website, when you look at this page and you're a bit confused, give them a ring and I'm sure they'll help you. Oh, and one more thing, there is a 30-day money-back guarantee on these feet. So try them out. If you don't like them, if they're not for you, send them back. If you do like them, keep them and have a nice time. Let's get to the crux of why you might want to even think about buying these feet. Okay, folks, well, let me tell you this, in case you didn't know. There is no such thing as silence on planet Earth. I know it might come as a bit of a shock to some of you, but it's true. The noise of life, it infects everything, especially your hi-fi. And that noise circles your components and it masks detail. Now look, many music listeners, do not hear this noise, this high frequency noise. And many others couldn't care less. Thing is though, I do hear it, I can hear it, and it does bother me, and I like to get rid of the stuff. Hence, this video. Now, just to confirm, I am not talking about obvious noise. I'm not talking about hydraulic drills here. I'm not talking about babies crying or dogs barking or billionaires counting their money. 
not that kind of noise. This kind of stuff is subtle. In fact, our brains kind of, well, we kind of tune this out. And if we didn't, we would go mad. This subtle stuff can only really be heard once it's gone. And I could tell some of you might want an example of what I'm blabbering on about. So let's see, what have I got for you? Well, ever thought why your hi-fi sounds better at night? Well, hang on to that thought because you have just tasted the bitter truth of high frequency noise. At night, there is less traffic. I mean, cars and lorries. There's less traffic on the roads. There's less movement in general. So vibration reduces. You have people living around you and they begin to turn off their appliances. So your main supply is cleaner. Phones are being turned off. So those clouds of Wi-Fi clutter, they're being removed. And that's just a few examples. And any one of these sources might not amount to a great deal of hassle, but when they're accumulated together, they become a big problem. So back to the list. Your house vibrates. Wooden flooring adds to that. The traffic outside your house produces more. Stand on the pavement and feel the shaking of the floor as an articulated lorry goes past your nose. Buzzing street lights don't help your main supply. Switch mode power supplies from your mobile phone or your PlayStation, they do horrible things to the mains. Next doors, noisy electrics add to the dirty mains problem. And as I say, Wi-Fi, and it's interesting, isn't it? The march of progress is apparently inverse to the notion of hi-fi sound quality. Oh, and did I mention general radio frequencies flying around your head as you watch this video? So life, well, it's noisy. It's very noisy indeed. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, I try and get rid of all of this stuff, or I try and keep it out and away from my hi-fi system, which is why my current system resembles the paranoid rantings of a hi-fi Heath Robinson made solid. For my American friends, think Rube Goldberg. My hi-fi system, it kind of manifests sonic fears with an aluminium fascia, you might say. So, when I look at Orva's EQ isolation feet, I hope that they will be adding a calming bubble around my hi-fi. These things are not called isolation feet for nothing. What do these feet do specifically? Well, they specifically target microphony. Now, microphony stems from that vibration I mentioned earlier on. And what microphony does, it takes physical vibrations and it converts them into electrical signals. And they wander all around your hi fi and they produce high frequency noise. And that noise masks delicate sonic detail. And this stuff doesn't come from the outside only. It actually comes from the outside out. Things like transformers produce microphony, for example. Now the Orva EQ feet use two pieces of tech to do their bidding. The first is, well, it's exactly the same as the Orva speaker feet I mentioned earlier. And that means particle impact damping technology. Now, particle impact damping technology is not the only tech used in these feet. It also uses custom silicon absorber technology, which is a sort of deformable suspension that provides compliant damping. That lot sits in a rigid machined aluminium shell, so it can take the weight of your components because these things, they sit underneath your components. Hence, the case of your hi-fi components is coupled with the Orva chamber of the EQ, but it's isolated from the hi-fi shelf via this what's called CSA suspension. Then the particle impact damping, well, that takes the vibration, it converts it into heat, and it sends it out into the air. How much heat? Not a lot, but enough to do the job. You won't be able to feel it. it 
The feet don't get warm or anything like that. So how do you use these feet? Well, just put the feet under your hi-fi equipment. So one side supports your hi-fi, the other end rests on the hi-fi shelf. You can use these feet with just about any hi-fi item you can think of. So you're talking amplifiers, you're talking CD players, you're talking streamers, you're talking turntables. The only thing I wouldn't recommend is if you have a turntable with a sprung suspended plinth, because that's basically doing the same job as these feet. So unnecessary, that's the only reason. I wouldn't use them on a suspended turntable plinth. Thing is, how do they sound? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we will find out. Welcome to the sound quality tests for the Orva EQ isolation feet. And I grabbed my copy of Pink Floyd's The Wall and I tested these feet underneath my Audio Lab 6000 CDT CD transport. And I played the track in the flesh. So, what I'm doing here with this first test is testing no feet versus having the feet in place. Now, I must also add, I had supported my hi fi on a very nice Blue Horizon shelving unit. And that in itself has features which are isolation centered. So the Orva EQs had a fight on their hands to even be noticed in the first place. Well, even after a couple of seconds, I could hear that it was winning that fight because what hit me immediately was how organized the music sounded with the Orva EQ feet in place. The stereo image was the big deal here. Without the feet, the stereo image wandered all over the place. Then the image itself was rather fuzzy and indistinct, but with the feet in place, the stereo image was fixed, it was locked straight ahead. Bass sounded wider with the feet added. There was a cavernous sound at the bottom end, while a crazy freaking out Hammond organ played, no doubt by Richard Wright, on the left channel, had more space to perform and thus occupied more room in the mix. Without the feet, the stereo image wandered all over the place. Then the image itself was rather fuzzy and indistinct, but with the feet in place, the stereo image was fixed, it was locked straight ahead. Vocal harmonies now sounded more like a group of voices rather than a single block of noise, while the rhythm guitar, well, that offered a more complex response now. So how do these feet compare to the Sound Deck Mark II Minis? Now, I love the Mark II Mini feet, which can be yours for, I think it's £52 for a set of four, which is a whole lot cheaper than the Orva EQs, of course. So you would expect the Orva EQs to be better in terms of performance. Now, in my experience, that doesn't always happen. It's not always the case. So it's always worth testing contrasting priced equipment just to see. And as good as the Mark II Minis are for the price, and I still love them to bits, the EQs ramp up the improvements in terms of sound. Now bass is a highlight on the Mark II Minis, but the EQs add a sense of structure to the lower end. They add more space while they're about it. The upper mid-range performed well via the Mark II Minis, but there is more space created by the EQs. More detail is extracted. More subtle and nuanced information that, added together, gives a more expensive, more complex performance. Now, I have to add, just to give a bit of balance, even though the Mark II Minis might not hit the performance heights of the Orva EQs, some of you, may prefer the Mark II Minis if you want a, a low-key, small footprint option, because the Minis are presented as well, what they are, flat discs. The Orva EQs are more noticeable because the EQs have bulk and, as you may have noticed, height. But the choice is obviously yours. Okay, so let's compare the Orva EQs with something comparable in terms of price, because the isoacoustics Aureas are very similar 
in price. In fact, it depends where you shop. In fact, it's possible the Oreos are slightly expensive from some retailers. Roundabouts, anyway. During this particular comparison, I moved to vinyl and tried the EQs under my Valve Phono amplifier. And as I say, I compared the all the EQs with the ISO Acoustics Aureus. Now, I reviewed the Aureus well, a while ago, five years, I think it was. And I'll put a link below if you want to see the review. It's a text review from my website. I'll put a link in the description. Now, I recall at the time they got a good review. And since I did that review, they've been in my system ever since. So I turned to Roy Wood's Boulders album, and I have to say, not only did the EQs keep up with the Aureus, but really they surpassed them in pure performance terms. Noise dropped even further using the EQs, so that treble-infused elements from the guitar plucks and cymbal taps were finer with more delicate secondary percussion, instead of having a slightly tizzy effect. Bass via the EQ sounded lower, broader, with larger spaces than the Aureus, and the bottom end was literally opened up. It had a more dramatic presentation. The EQs also kept better pace with the complex guitar pieces. That is, each string was isolated and tracked. And that's basically the review. So let me put all of that into some final thoughts. I will give you a pros and cons list and also a rating. Gotta say, isolating tools never fail to amaze me. They can improve the overall sound of your hi-fi system just by removing vibration, high frequency noise, and then lowering the noise floor. It proves, well, to me at any rate, that high quality sound is actually there, right in front of you. It hasn't moved. Problem is though, often you just don't hear it because there's something in the way, and it's this noise. So when you have a really good hi-fi sitting in front of you, it's doing its job. It's producing high quality sound. Thing is though, third party, as it were, parasitic noise is actually masking a heap of detail. So you never get to really hear what your hi-fi system is truly capable of. And also, when you think about it, if that's happening, you're wasting your money. You've spent all this money on this hi-fi and maybe you're hearing, oh, I don't know, 70% of what it's capable of. That is, you're not hearing the information retrieval you paid for in the first place. With the Orva EQ feet, that basic sound quality is revealed to you, getting you closer to the truth of your own system. So, pros and cons. And in the good section, well, it's that low noise performance. It really does reveal a host of hidden detail. Speaking of detail, I heard a lot more mid-range detail when I was using the Orva EQs. In addition to that, going further down the frequency range, I had a big bass experience and I thoroughly enjoyed it. In the bad section, well, this is a minor point and it will affect some people, probably most people won't care, but the height, the height of these feet, and look, these stack audio feet, they're not alone. There are plenty of other feet which are high and they lift up your components and they make it obvious that you have feet underneath, and it might not be as aesthetically pleasing to see that, but that's the only very minor criticism. It's not even a criticism. It's more of a choice, really. As I say, most people won't be bothered. So, with all of that, I would love to give the Orva EQs an award-winning rating. I'm going to give these feet a groovy 8 out of 10. Congratulations to Stack Audio. And that's your lot, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And then, please, before you go, just down below, can you click on the like and subscribe buttons, please? And that will keep you in touch with my reviews. As soon as a review comes out, you will get a notification. That's great. Also, down below, I'll put links to Stack Audio if you want to give them a ring or if you want to contact them by email or whatever. Uh, I hope there's an email address. I'll have a look. If you see one down there, I have found one. So there's other links to my Facebook group. You're welcome to join that. My website, 
Uh, like I say, I've got one or two reviews I can put down there. I'll put the links down there too. Take you to my website. Have a browse. There's all kinds of stuff over there. If you want to check out my Hi-Fi News Etc. videos, nip over to Patreon. That's where they live exclusively. And there's all kinds of other stuff over there, buyer's guides and also unique music-based features and other videos and Hi-Fi Tour videos and all kinds of stuff. That's on my Patreon page. Any support you can give me there helps to fund this channel, keeps it going. I'll be back on Friday with a Music Alerts. Music Alerts what? A Music Alerts video. <laughs> I seem to stop at a weird place. A Music Alerts video. And if you want to know what physical product I've been receiving this week, that will tell you. Anyway, hope to have your company. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.